Hello, Michael here, and today I thought I'd do another dev talk and just go over a few things that I've been doing over the last few weeks in regards to my own learnings. So, so the topic of, of this particular video, it's going to be predominantly about actor components and a size map. Uh, so it might be things that you've not really heard about or, or, or use very much, uh, but there's certainly some things that me, myself personally, have started to use quite a lot, particularly over the last few weeks, uh, especially considering how useful I've, I've found them to be. Um, so in this video I'm going to go through and sort of show you what I've been using them for and why I've been using them uh, is probably a, you might find quite quite useful. So um, one one of the, no, so the first start off and just say that I am currently in the dialogue system uh, sort of project that I created the tutorial for. Uh, so if you are looking for a dialogue system, by all means go check the tutorial out. Uh, it's the one that you'll you'll see in this sort of video. Um, so yeah. So in terms of actor components, these are things uh, that you can create that you can essentially add to other actors. Uh, it's fairly straightforward to create them. Uh, just right clicking your contact browser, blueprint class, and then you just choose the actor uh, component uh, and that will create a new one. So you're probably thinking, well, what what can you use an actor component for? And I suppose the, the correct answer is whatever whatever you can imagine is probably, uh, probably the best answer. So for me, um, I've used it for quite a few things. So one of the most useful ones for me at the moment is actually the interaction component. So I'm just inside my third person character and this third person character it has an infantry system, it can interact with things, uh, a couple of other things but there isn't actually much in here as you can see there's no functions in there, um, there's not, not much in the event graph uh, and this is everything which most of it's just a default uh, third person character movement stuff. The only things that I've changed really is using an input controls uh, actor component and I'm setting some mappings through there instead of having it in here which is like the default uh, and a few things regarding it in the hotbar to load and then some things here regarding interactions and again something else for the infantry. But ultimately everything that the player character can do at the moment is all driven through uh, actor components. So quickly show a demonstration. Oh, I am missing some characters, one second. Let me just check on these. Yes, yeah, so that's disappeared. So I'll quickly set that back. And again, this is another actor component, so let me just quickly sort it out. That one. Uh, let's double check that one. Yeah, that one's cleared as well. So I'll quickly set that one back up. All right, there we go. Yeah, so you'll probably see at the moment uh, as I run around, there is the red lines. So that's that's a trace line. So that itself is being done through the interaction actor component. Uh, and when that hits something, it shows uh, the interaction text. Uh, which can vary slightly depending on what it is that you're, you're looking at. So in these cases, it's pick up, and for the NPCs, it's it's talk. I'm just going to quickly disable the uh, lines. Um, so yeah, so the interaction component it handles getting the whatever you're looking at to highlight uh, with a little outline, uh, as well as showing up the uh, the little pop-up message that, that you have. Uh, so when I interact you can see it also sort of moves in the camera uh, which is controlled by yet again another component uh, which is for the camera controls. So if you watch the tutorial I've done um, this is in terms of the dialogue system uh, it probably looks quite similar. Uh, it's nothing nothing particularly new there. But um, so yeah, so as I mentioned, it's all driven through the interaction system. So if I was to go to the interaction system, I'll quickly give you a quick, quick rundown really. 
So when it's first created uh, on the on the character, it stores a few references just to make performing certain tasks a little bit easier. Uh, but ultimately, what it does is it calls the trace for interact function, uh, which is the line trace. So this does all the uh, tracing it needs to do, uh, checks against previous and, and hit actors, uh, and then sets some things regarding the outline states for, for whatever it's looking at, uh, as well as some things regarding the interaction prompt. So that's all handled within this actor component. And what that means is if for whatever reason I think, oh, actually I'd, I'd really like a different type of character that behaves a little bit differently, but in terms of interacting I want it to be the same, I can just drop on that interaction component and it will all work exactly the same. So the way that that it, it works for me, or the way I've got it set up, is I get a reference to the interaction component and then whenever I press E, uh, which is based on the input action, it does a few things and these are all on the interaction component itself. Um, so the first two here, these are just for updating the little timer for, for you holding the button down and then when it's actually completed it then physically triggers the interact. Uh, so using the actor component and uh, blueprint interface we're able to uh, essentially try and keep things quite consistent so anything that's got the uh, interact blueprint interface can then have its prompt uh, its interaction triggered through the interaction system uh, without any without any problems so that's kind of how uh, that itself is is set up so the interaction component for me it's quite a quite a useful thing to have um, particularly if if you're the sort of person that, that likes to have multiple projects for testing and things like that sometimes you just want a quick interaction system that you can throw in just to get things going yet again it's another great example of of creating those active components just because it helps reduce the amount of work you've you've got to do ultimately um, other things that you can obviously check with the uh, with the actor components is just checking the references that it has. So if you right click, go to reference viewer, and you can just see how many references it has, and that just helps indicate what sort of things you need to make sure you've got uh, if you're moving it about, particularly with projects. So sometimes with uh, actor components, it can be nice just to make sure they are a little bit a little bit lighter. Is probably one way to put it. But yet again, it obviously sort of varies slightly depending on what it is you're actually trying to do. Um, so another good use for actor components that um, that I found is for things such as uh, like camera controls, for example. Uh, so I have another one here uh, on the third person character, uh, and what this does is it actually controls that little zoom effect that you get. Um, I'll quickly show you again. So when you when you interact with like an NPC, the camera zooms in a little bit, and then when you leave in the conversation, it, it pops back out. So that's all done by this this particular uh, component. So the way that it, it it actually functions is it doesn't directly reference the third person character at all. Now this is quite useful for a few reasons. Yet again, if you drop this component onto any other any other actor, if it's got a spring arm component and a camera component, then this uh, camera controls component will will work on it. And the reason why is because on begin play, uh, it gets the owner, which is a just a type actor, and then it ha uses this uh, this nice node called get component by class. So this allows you to specify a specific class that it's looking for. Uh, so it's a bit it's a lot more lightweight than using a cast. So if if I was to do it the traditional way, I could have quite easily come in here and obviously cast to the third person character, uh, like so, and and got the references I needed uh, that way. Uh, so for example I could just get the camera and get camera. Uh, it's in the list somewhere. Yeah, so I could have just gotten it from here, like camera boom for example, and, and hook, hooked it up that way. Uh, but that itself then limits this component to only really ever working on, on a third person character. But the thing about the camera controls is it doesn't you know it shouldn't care well it shouldn't matter if 
it's placed on a third person character or a first person character or whatever it is whatever component you've got because the only thing it cares about is the spring arm component and the actual camera component itself so using the get component by class is a great way of, of doing that because it kind of helps relinquish it from from very specific references uh, which just allows it to be more usable in a lot more, more you know, a lot more places so with this because it's able to get those specific references these can then be used in the functions I have in here um, so if we look at that, the, the set OV uh, the set FOV function it stores those in here for like the desired FOV and then the interpolation speed and then we have the actual lerp FOV which then goes through and, and lerps to the desired FOV but as I mentioned you know the references that it's got in here these are very specific to what it needs to function um, which isn't everything that's in the third person character uh, so it's quite a nice thing that you can do with with the actor components so another good reason why you might want to use something particularly like this with the, the get components by class is actually down to the amount of space that a given actor will use so that sort of brings me on to the size map if I was to go to the third person character that I have and I was to look at the size map this shows you how much space it takes up on disk uh, and how much memory so how much RAM uh, this particular actor would, would take up so as you can see the third person character in terms of the amount of RAM it's over a over a, you know 100 meg which is a lot <laughs> uh, particularly considering some machines might only have you know, 4 gig of RAM uh, in some instances yes you can get some with, with loads uh, and whatnot and you'll find that a lot of these are down to uh, textures uh, if you look at these you know the, all these are down to the the, the skeletal mesh uh, the, 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 essentially the third person character references now if I was to go to back to the camera controls and look at the size map it's tiny it's a hundred and forty eight kilobytes uh, and in terms of the memory size it's even lower than that which is great <laughs> it's very 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 lightweight but if I was to come into the uh, camera controls and come into here and then actually do that cast that I mentioned earlier so cast to third person character make sure I get the right one uh, hook that up and then we'll get the uh, camera boom just like that and hook it up the way that this works is it'll function exactly the same however if I was to go back to the size map on the camera controls you'll now see that the, the size has, has just absolutely boomed, you know, bloomed up. Uh, and the reason why is because it's referencing the full third person character. So it ha it needs to sort of know where everything is that the third person character references. Now I'd imagine, you know, if you've got three camera controls in all referencing the same character, I'd imagine the engine to engine probably does some some instancing of some sorts probably so it might not be like three times as much but uh, it's probably still going to be more than it probably needs um, so you get again with the active components being a little bit smart about how you set them up particularly with the references can be quite a nice way of, of keeping those those file sizes down and using the size map is a great way to, to check that so again I've just removed that cast to the third person character because it's, it's not needed and yet again you can see that size has just, just dropped back down uh, and it's sort of similar with some of the other components so if we look at the interaction one again we've got like one megabyte as base for the disk and then you know less than you know, just over a quarter of a meg on the memory size but yet again these don't directly reference the third person character because there's nothing directly in there that it ever needs to, to reference uh, which means I can use that, that space somewhere else in the project uh, <laughs> whatever that might be uh, so yeah so for me personally I've, like I said, I've used these active components for quite a few things now um, and it can be quite a nice way of, of just helping to get reusable logic 
and help reducing the amount of space or sort of RAM that your, your particular project is, is using. Uh, another example of, of where it's used, uh, particularly with the active components, is on the NPCs that I've got. So in the NPC base, uh, the mesh itself isn't set, uh, neither is the anim class. So if I was to look at the size on the map there, it's it's quite small, there's, there's not much in it, yeah, particularly with the uh, memory size as well. Uh, and instead what I do, particularly for stats regarding um, the character, uh, I actually have an actor component for the NPC. So this component stores very, you know, all the information like the dialogue component, uh, the actual class for the dialogue component that it uses to create that actor component, uh, character name, and then the actual uh, skeletal mesh and the, the anim blueprint that, that this particular character should use. Uh, and that's placed within that NPC base. So these variables can then be adjusted and, and changed. So in some instances, if you're just wanting to get, so, you know, so some of these I might end up breaking up even more. <laughs> um, things such as like the skeletal mesh and the anim class, it might make sense to put that in its own special place and having the attributes somewhere else. So that way, if the player ever needs to get specific attributes on the NPC, they can always get the actor reference for the NPC and then do that actor um, component search. Uh, the find it again yeah they get component by class and just search specifically for what it is they're looking for so like the attributes which saves that actor from having to load all of the other NPC stuff um, so yeah again because if it doesn't need it then it shouldn't need to reference it so it can just be a good way of, of kind of mitigating some of those things so yeah so yeah, so that about it. So that's pretty much what I wanted to, to talk over today. Hopefully you found this video useful. Um, hopefully give you some ideas of what you could be looking at in your projects, things you could possibly be researching yourself uh, to, to hopefully make your, your projects better, more efficient, easier to use. Um, so yeah, I just want to say thank you for, for watching this video. And if you do like this video and you found it, found it useful, uh, don't forget to leave a like on the video. And it would be great if you could leave a comment as well. It's certainly great to hear from you, uh, particularly if, you know, it's always nice to know what projects you're working on and, and whatnot. So, yeah. So, yeah, thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.